What's up guys? Today I'm bringing you an exclusive upper body workout. So hope you find it to be informative and challenging. So, we're starting off with the Larson press, but there's one major form twist. There's zero scapula retraction. Yeah, you heard that right. My back is 100% flat. And I'm allowing the scapula to move freely, especially protract at the top. What does this accomplish? Gets more out of less weight, especially for a short arm bencher like myself. As you can clearly see, the range of motion is increased by inches, particularly in the bottom position. And that's where 90% of lifters are weakened. It's also where the way to stretch in the pecs is initiated. It's not bad, zero retraction day one. So this is essentially a free buffalo bar replacement. It doesn't get harder than this unless I narrow out the grip even further or bring it further up on my chest. But that would be subpar from a movement pattern perspective. I've been pressing this way for years and I know my own biomechanics and I don't think flaring out is a good idea. Though I will say, because I know that people are gonna comment about injuries, right? The new meta seems to suggest that there isn't necessarily any bad positions. It really comes down to tissue capacity and proper load management. And that's why I wasn't afraid to keep my back loose, quote unquote. I've already done a boatload of weighted dips and push-ups, so my tolerance is higher than most people. Now, I'm not suggesting you copy me, but I would recommend checking out a video by Coach Kasim, creator of N1 Education. He makes a good argument for why you shouldn't necessarily force being into maximum retraction. Though for my current opinion, I'd say a combination of retraction and protraction is probably ideal for most lifters. Anyway, I now bring you the second exercise, super wide grip pull-ups, which I'm alternating back and forth between push and pull. I chose this variation because it is extremely difficult and smashes the upper back hard. See, it's not necessarily the movement pattern that matters, like vertical versus horizontal. It's the muscle biasing effect that must be considered. And when you bring your arms this far out, it's pretty much all upper back. Like, of course, your lats still contribute. They can't not. It's not an isolation movement, but you're going to feel your teres major and traps like crazy. And just look at the muscular activation in these sets. It's pretty obvious in addition to the weights being used. Because if I were to narrow my grip on this exact day, I could instantly double load, and that is not over exaggeration. You've already seen me pull four plates. So that indicates to me that my upper back is a weakness. And when we talk about weaknesses, it's not in an absolute sense, it's relative to the individual. Some people might be stronger in this grip, but that's probably because they trained it long enough, or they have super long arms, or they're doing partials, which is the case 99% of the time, or, their lats are underdeveloped. But in my case, it's the opposite. And that's why I'm training what I suck at, which is generally how I approach all body parts. In this case, I made an improvement in weight and my actual body weight is heavier. So we're getting stronger and I think thicker as well. But you can be the judge for yourself. Ah! So the next exercise is a one arm landmine press, which is Freaking difficult. Now, I will say this was not the plan for today's session. I actually received a Viking press attachment, but it didn't fit on any of my barbells. So much for quality control, which was quite a disappointment, but I was still determined in doing a landmine press. And so I chose the single arm version because it's extremely difficult. Now I have to load up a bunch of plates. In a way, I would compare this to a one arm dumbbell overhead press. And the weights aren't gonna be too different either, which is pretty cool. Though I suspect that height is the major factor when doing this. Taller guys can lift heavier because the bar is gonna be more vertical. Therefore, there's less of a moment arm. So if you wanna be equal for everybody, technically you would do this off the knees. But honestly, that doesn't matter. Just do what's most comfortable. And what you can see here is that I'm grabbing onto the power rack, which increases stability. This is actually superior from a hypertrophy perspective. And so the only con of this variation is the lateral instability because the landmine can move side to side. And so you gotta find your perfect body positioning, but it's not too bad once you get the hang of things. Also, you gotta make sure that your torso is even when training both sides. And in this situation, my right side was a little bit more twisted, which stems from muscular imbalances, like my left side is always gonna be about two reps stronger, plus not being fully equivalent to the center of my rack. So next time, I'm probably gonna use dip handles on the side to get better lined up, but either way, the intensity on both sides was comparable, so I'm happy with how this turned out as a whole. Now, do I plan on doing a lot of these moving forward? 
Probably not, to be honest. I'm looking forward to doing bilateral landmine presses with more stability. And if I had access to heavier dumbbells, I would favor those every time. But this is just another variation you can employ. Anyway, the fourth exercise is the ghetto lap pull down using my new spreader bar. So as I pointed out earlier, we're doing two vertical pulls, but the muscle emphasis is different. And in this situation, it's a mostly neutral grip and I'm allowed to open up a bit at the bottom. So it's less restrictive than say using a V bar. And because my legs are up, there's more spinal flexion as well as the direction of the cable being more diagonal. So what is working here? You guys already know. It's more biasing the iliac division of the lats. However, my form here isn't perfect in that regard. Like you can clearly see the upper back is taking over in some respects, but I don't really care as it's still superior to what I'm used to being the straight bar and easy bar. And you know what? The pump of my lats was incredible. And today I actually have doms there. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And to me, using a little bit more weight is a worthy trade-off. Otherwise, I have to take off that 25. And at least now I can match the loads that I always use. Not that you have to, though. So for me, the only time I see perfection being utilized is if it's one arm at a time. Now, let's move on to some isolation work. So this is going to be a giant set. I chose the spreader pushdown. But if you guys don't have this, just use longer handles or two rope attachments. This way, you can open up more at the bottom. That's the whole point of doing this. You can also do the uh, gymnastic ring setup that I showed you in a previous workout video. The whole point of this is to get better lined up for the long head of your triceps. When you're in a fully internally rotated position, the lateral head is most stimulated. But if you want your arms to be big in a relaxed state, have that mass coming out from the rear, the long head is where it's at. And so having a bit more elbow flare and external rotation is better in this regard. Now this isn't perfect. The best way would actually be uh, two cables coming out. This way you can be flawlessly lined up, but this is still good, especially since we're doing the overhead extensions right after, which you'll barely be able to get five reps, which does indicate that the long head is being sufficiently stimulated. Like you're going to have a very hard time locking out those elbows. So for the last two sets, you're going to do this, okay? Plus the face pulls for some extra shoulder health. Though the way I'm showing you right now was actually not for the rear delts. You would actually have to be at a 45 degree angle for that. This is more for the upper back and will hit the external rotators a bit harder. So I feel that they're better from an injury prevention standpoint, but not necessarily hypertrophy. But yeah, don't skip out on these, especially if you're doing a lot of back squats and deep range of motion presses. And with that said, guys, I bring you the final exercise being occluded chin-ups. This lit up my biceps. Quite comparable to curls, if I'm being honest with you. And the reason I chose these was due to seeing a study on blood flow restriction training looking at barbell back squats. And there appeared to be no hypertrophy differences in both groups. And so I started thinking, what if I apply a similar philosophy to chin-ups? By this point, you're fatigued and the biceps are already a limiting factor. Mix in the BFR bands and you got a winning combination. Not that you're isolating, but you're mostly going to feel your biceps. And that's pretty much the only thing that I felt. The pump was insane, which you're going to see in a bit. And this is only off three sets with my body weight. Imagine if I get progressively stronger with higher reps. That's the plan. Keep these in my rotation. See what happens in the long term. All right, guys, we're done. And I might be on something with these occluded chin-ups. So yeah, I'll continue experimenting with these with my curls as well, because we can't be minimalist. And with that said, I'm done for today. Hope you enjoyed this workout. Try it out, and I'll see you in the next one.